is a lifestyle of health and sustainability. What is the Lojas market? The Lojas market is green buildings, ecotourism, alternative transportation, natural lifestyles, personal health. That's the Lojas market, okay? Ecotourism, personal health, that's supplements and things like that, okay? 290 billion dollars was spent on the Lojas market. Two years ago, there was a financial squeeze when companies all over the world, some of them major companies, closed shop, closed down. They had to let go of people. There was an economic squeeze financially. Guess what? The Lojas market, we did ecotourism and personal health. It was the only market that was left unscathed. They didn't lose jobs. The economy didn't go out. Instead, it went up. Look at this. 1996, 2002, 2010, it's growing by an exponential 23%. What am I saying here? I am saying that we in this country have the resources. We're not Singapore. We're not Hong Kong. We're not Thailand. We don't, we are 7,000 amazing, gorgeous, beautiful, spectacular islands with resources that are not existing in other countries. We have the resources to build an economy which is strong and robust. You know, I, I, I am very much into health. And in Manila, I go to this very upscale shop, which is called Healthy Options. And I went there, and I bought a bottle like that. And, it, and the bottle, I bought the bottle, it said Goji Juice. And the reason why I bought it was it said, this juice is very good for the immune system. Na kung iinumin ko yan, talagang lalakas ako. Tapos tinignan ko yung label. Pinasa ko yan. Ang sabi ng label, uh, these berries are taken from the Brazilian rainforest. And then I read that and I said, my God, you know. I mean, I went to Sibuyan, I went there to the Katutubo, and, the, and you know how much the bottle cost? Ganyan kaliit yung botelya, 3,500 pesos. And I went to the Katutubo there, and, and uh, in, in, uh, I was in uh, Brooks Point, they want to stop the mining, and they were showing me um, what you call this, uh, they, they were showing me um, Almasiga, and they were showing me things, Ma'am, ito, secret ito, ha? Hindi ko lang, hindi natin lang sinasabi sa lahat. Pero kung iinumin mo ito, maaalis yung sore throat mo. Tapos, everyone was scared of getting malaria, so I asked this other katutubo, eh ikaw, bakit hindi ka takot? Baka ma ma makagat ka ng malaria mosquito. Ah, wala, wala, wala. May ano kami doon sa bundok. Who knows what's there in the Palawan rainforest? Who knows what's there? The magic that's there which can make us all rich. And we are mutilating it for the minerals that foreigners will bring out. That's what we call the resource curse. Where the countries which are rich in resources, because they are poor, allow themselves to be abused by richer countries. I talked to this guy from England. I said, why are you here? Why are you coming here? Why don't you mine in your country? And then he said, ah, Gina, we have naubos na yung minerals natin. Eh. And I said, so inubos nyo yung minerals nyo. Ngayon you're gonna come here and get our minerals. Why don't you just go back? We don't gain anything anyway. You know what we get here? 0.36% employment. They say mining creates a good economy. You know what we get? 1.4% GDP. 1.4. You know how much agriculture gives us? 18% GDP. You know how much tourism gives us? More than 30. Why are we doing this for 1.4% GDP? Who is benefiting from the minerals that we own? I want to tell you something about this island in the South Pacific. Okay, it's this gorgeous, beautiful island. It's called Nauru. Okay, it's like this, Palawan. Coral reefs that stretched out, trees, agriculture, birds. It was really beautiful. In the 1900s, the English, the Germans, the New Zealanders, and the Australians discovered Nauru. Tapos nakita nila because the birds were leaving their poo, poo there for millions of years, marami silang phosphate. Okay, so they said, wow, ang daming phosphate dito. So from the 1900s, they mined the country of phosphate. They mined the country. And, and for many years, the company was rich. And you know what? The islanders were rich. Ang dami nilang pera. They had the highest per capita income in the Pacific. Hindi lang sa bansa nila, in the Pacific. Ang dami dami nilang pera that they were investing all over the world. Guess what?
Remember what Dr. Nina said? Pag kinuha yan, hindi na yan babalik. You know what happened to Nauru? April of last year, you know, they even bought a building in, in Buendia, in Makati, the Bank of Nauru building. April of last year, April of last year, they lost all their money kasi naubos na yung minerals nila. Wala na silang phosphate. So ano, ano ginawa ng creditors? Kinuha na lahat ng properties nila sa buong mundo. And so that's why that Bank of Nauru building in the, the Bank of Nauru building in the, uh, in Makati is now the Pacific Star. Okay, so but they lost all their, they lost all their money, they lost all their resources. Do you know what their island looks like now? Look it up on the net. Nauru. Yep. 82% of their island looks like that. They finished it completely. And if you will look at the abandoned sites of Palawan, if you will look at the 37, you know, places in Samar, Benguet, Bacolod, if you will look at all of that, there is no difference between the abandoned mine sites and that. And abandoned mine sites have been abandoned for 36 years. If you tell me na pwede ayusin, eh, ayusin yo. 36 years na, ganun pa rin siya. When will we learn? And you know what that is? That's their supermarket. Palaban! You know, I want to tell you something. Everyone that comes here and everyone goes to the forest, talagang sobrang, you know, I mean, it's so, I'll, let, I'll tell you a story. I had a house guest last week. Okay, she's from America. And I brought her to Subic. And we wanted to go island to island. And then that snorkeling came in. So we went snorkeling. And then actually, nagsaya night fishing dun sa mga isla sa Subi. And then she saw some small fish. Alam mo dito nakikita niyo, some small bright colored fish. Sabi niya, Gina, oh my God, did you see that small fish? Kamunti siya nahulog. And then she saw a blue starfish. Ha! Huh? She said, this blue starfish, it was like that. And I said, boy, you know, you should go to Palawan, no? <laughs> I mean, you have no idea. And sabi niya, matuto na ako mag-diving kasi ay, wala ako kasi walang ganyan sa bansa niya. There's nothing like that where they live. The thing is, you guys here, you live in so much splendor. I wonder, who here has been to Manila? Can you raise your hand? Okay. What's your experience when you go to Manila? What's the air like? You know how much money we spend due to air pollution in Manila? 24 billion pesos every year because people get sick, they cannot go to work, there's the 8-30% the, the of the jeepney drivers all have tuberculosis. 24 billion pesos even and this affects not only a certain group, rich, young, old, poor. My brother is already the chairman of ABS-CBN, okay? He can't live in Manila. He has to go there far to Laguna because his kids have asthma. My driver's kids have asthma. Look at your air here. Feel the air in Palawan, you know? Is this not wealth or what is it? I once wrote an article, what is poverty? What is poverty? Is wealth just cash? How about the blue sky? How about the stars? You know, how about your trees? How about your forest? Is that not wealth? That's wealth that you have, that the rest of the world, many of them don't have. Please, please, don't let it go. Don't let it go. It's your wealth. And actually, with, if you take care of this wealth, my, my, my sharing with you is that if you take care of this wealth, and we, in the same Palawan movement, we are already more than one million signatures, and we're going for 10 million, we're going to Samar, we're going to Romblon, we're going to Surigao, and everyone will say, please leave God's creation alone. And you must be really proud that the one leading this is Palawan. Okay, thank you. Okay, look at this. This is the forested area in the country. This is our last remaining forest. Nakita mo yan sa We Interrupt, ang dami-daming buba dyan. This is our last remaining forest. Eh kung walang puno, de walang ibon. So these are the threatened bird localities. 
These are the protected areas. You can see here that Palawan is very protected. And here, Isabella. What happens to the green that's not covered by blue? By law, uh, uh, Attorney Anna was, by law, by law, three-fourths of Palawan should not be mine. By law. Why is the law being broken? Why is the law being broken? Now, this is what we tell you. Maybe we're all not... We're, we're, we're not as rich as the miners. You know, the miners pay uh, election campaigns. But you know what my brother told me? He said, Gina, go for the millions. When you get the millions, you, relevate, you elevate it to a political issue. Hey, you know, no, he said, kayo ang boss ko, di ba? Sinabi niya yan. Well, the boss is speaking. Because look at this. Mining applications. Papaya pa kayo? Papaya pa kayo? Of course not. Of course not. The strength of this country is what God has given us. Let me repeat what Attorney Jerdy said. 70%, you know, biodiversity is, is a different flora and fauna that is found in the planet. If there's no biodiversity, there's no life. Our planet will look like the moon. 70% of the biodiversity of the planet is found in 17 countries. Guess what? Out of the 300 countries, we are one of the 17. We carry 70% of what is needed for this planet to survive. And guess what? Do you know what endemicity is? Endemicity is the flora and fauna that cannot be found anywhere else in the world. Only here. In the planet, the Philippines is number one in endemicity. We're number one per unit area. Sa kadami daming floor, like I can tell, I'm ABS-CBN, di ba? We can tell the people, come here to Palawan. Ang makikita mo dito, hindi mo makikita kahit saan sa mundo, dito lang. Dito lang. And if you ravage the forest, if you denude the forest, See what the miners say, no? What the miners say is, Gina, for every tree that we cut, we will plant 50 more. For every tree that we cut, we will plant 50 more. They will cut a 150-year-old tree that gives 9 million pesos benefit and plant a small sapling. Even if you plant a hundred of that, wag na lang. Then I have to wait a hundred years for the tree to grow. Why? Why? This is our world, this is our country, this is our province. And I tell you one thing, in my experience, you know that we have been able to stop the mining in Sibuyan Island. Why? Because all the mayors united. We have been able to stop the mining in Romblon, where Mon Pahe, the DNR said, Gina, no more mining in Romblon. The greater majority of Palawenos unite together, together with people all over the world. You know, I'm going to San Francisco, we have online signatures from Europe and Italy. All over the world, all eyes are on Palawan. All eyes are on Palawan. And we are all united behind this cause of saving our creation, of saving God's creation. My experience is, is that there is nothing in the world that can stand in the face of a people united for a noble cause. Nothing! My God, those are people from Cebu. Ronglon gave me 80,000 for Palawan. Samar gave me several thousand for Palawan. Even people who have never been here before are giving signatures for Palawan.